Today I want to tell you about a theory of everything you've probably never heard of. It's called causal fermion systems. In a nutshell, the idea is that everything can be explained by fermions that are the particles of matter. I only heard of this coincidentally because I met the guy who developed it, Felix Finster, about 10 years ago. And I just saw he's published a book about it, so I thought it'd be a good occasion to briefly summarize what this is all about. If you follow the popular science news, it might feel like there's a new theory of everything announced every other day. But almost all of these are bullshit, and you'll never hear of them again. If you look at the serious approaches, there really aren't many. There's string theory, and for what string theorists are concerned, this is also the end of the list. Well, I'm not a string theorist, so I'd add Stephen Wolfram's hypergraphs, Greg Lisi's E8, and on days I feel generous, Eric Weinstein's geometric unity, though for all I can tell it isn't a quantum theory, which falls short of my expectations. In any case, I think these are genuinely new and possible avenues, and you've all heard of them. But no one ever mentions causal fermion systems. The theory of everything we're looking for should describe all the fundamental interactions and all the particles in the universe in one consistent framework. A lot of physicists hope that once we succeed with that, we'll also get dark matter and dark energy out of it. But right now, we have two major frameworks, the standard model of particle physics and general relativity. The standard model describes the electromagnetic force, the strong nuclear force, and the weak nuclear force. A theory of everything should combine them into one single framework. This means that a theory of everything must also solve the problem of how to combine general relativity with quantum physics, so it necessarily contains a theory of quantum gravity. However, the opposite is not necessarily the case. You can find a quantum description of gravity that still has the standard model of particle physics in a separate framework. This would then not be a theory of everything. An example for a theory that is quantum gravity, but not a theory of everything, is loop quantum gravity. It's the same with asymptotically safe gravity. Quantum gravity, yes, a theory of everything, no. To understand the causal fermion system, we first have to look at what's in the standard model. The particles in the standard model are either fermions or bosons. Fermions are particles like electrons or quarks. They have masses and they have spin one half. The bosons are the particles that mediate the forces between the fermions. For the electromagnetic force, that's the photon. For the strong nuclear force, that's the gluon. And for the weak nuclear force, we have the W and Z boson. But the beauty of the standard model is that you get the bosons from the fermions if you know that the fermions have conserved charges. This is the electric charge, which you all know and like, and also the color charge of the strong nuclear force and the weak hypercharge and so on. The logic goes as follows. For a charge to be conserved, you need a symmetry. And for the symmetry to hold, you need the bosons. So fermions with conserved charges require these bosons. This, in a nutshell, is how the standard model works. Now about those causal fermion systems. Felix Finster, who came up with this idea, doesn't start with space and time and puts particles in it. He just starts with matter in the form of fermions. The fermions form a sort of network in which the nodes are either occupied by a fermion or not, and the links are causal relations what fermions? He starts with the fermions of the standard model. Then he shows he also gets the bosons plus, here is the relevant part, he gets gravity. So this is not a theory which derives the standard model from nowhere. He starts with the already known fermions and their conserved charges. And we knew that the fermions of the standard model need to come with the bosons. So that's not so surprising. What is surprising is that he gets gravity. Yeah. <laughs> 
Now that's what you need for a theory of everything. The reason for this is, in my understanding, that gravity is implicitly contained in the causal relations between the fermions. If you want those causal relations to work out, you need a universal interaction that couples to all energies and masses, and that conserves the energies and masses, and there is only one way to do this, which is gravity, and that naturally also gives you a way to order all these nodes in the fermion network so that they approximate the neatly ordered space-time that we are used to. So space-time in this approach is really just a way to describe how fermions interact. Okay, so this is the part of the idea that I like. Now to the downside. I said that Finster gets gravity. Actually, this isn't entirely true. He only gets gravity in the weak field limit. He does not get Einstein's full equations so far. Because I think there's only one way to complete the weak field approximation, so he'll probably figure that out sooner or later. I think that Finster is right in that one gets general relativity from moderate assumptions about causal relations. In fact, if you think about it, this is also what Stephen Wolfram says happens with his hypergraphs that we talked about in a previous video. The hypergraphs describe causal relations. There is no underlying space-time, but the causality requirement brings in one universal force, and that can only be gravity. By the way, this video comes with a quiz that lets you check how much you remember. Now look, maybe the thing with the fermions isn't the right path to go, but I think it's an interesting approach that deserves somewhat more attention. I also find it intriguing that the idea that gravity is implicit in the causal structure seems to appear independently in different approaches. This makes me think there is something to it. It seems to strongly suggest that indeed space and time don't actually exist, but that they are just our way of describing an entirely relational network of something else. It makes my head spin when I think about this. I mean, it's hard enough to get used to a four-dimensional space-time and deal with the question of what space and time really are, but now maybe neither space nor time exist. I'm not sure my brain is quite ready for this. That said, I've seen many, many approaches like this that seem to have a core of truth that I find promising. But in reality, there's usually one guy who pushes the idea forward, and when that one person retires, that's the end of the story. They say that progress in science happens one funeral at a time, but sometimes I wonder if funerals are why we're not making progress. If this video inspired you to get started on your own theory of everything, I recommend you check out the physics and maths courses on Brilliant. Brilliant offers courses on a large variety of topics in science, computer science, and mathematics. All their courses have interactive visualizations and come with follow-up questions. Whether you want to learn to think like an engineer, brush up your knowledge of algebra, or want to learn coding in Python, Brilliant has you covered. It's a fast and easy way to learn, and you can do it whenever and wherever you have the time. And they're adding new courses each month. I even have my own course on Brilliant. That's an introduction to quantum mechanics. It'll help you understand what a wave function is and what the difference is between superpositions and entanglement. It also covers interference, the uncertainty principle, and Bell's theorem. And after that, you can continue maybe with a course on quantum computing or differential equations. This doesn't just sound good, it is good. If you go and check out Brilliant, make sure to use my link brilliant.org slash Sabina or scan the QR code. You'll get to try out everything Brilliant has to offer for a full 30 days and you'll get 20% off the annual premium subscription. So go and check this out. I can really recommend it. Thanks for watching. See you tomorrow.